Monica Bnisky, Curator of Decorative Arts and Design here at the High Museum of Art and co-curator of Sonia Clark, We Are Each Other. And my name is Hannah Amuka and I work in the Interpretation Division here at the High Museum of Art. And we're standing here in the exhibition galleries for Sonia Clark, We Are Each Other, and we are going to talk about several projects. Hannah, I'm so excited because we are acquiring Writer Type Pen and Sword by Sonia Clark for the High Museum's collection. And I'm excited not only because this is the first work of Sonia Clark to enter the museum's collection, but also because I think it is such a pivotal work in her um, larger practice. And it really offers us lots of ways to talk about history and culture and Sonia's work. And even in the title, right? P writer type pen and sword. Yeah, I think the way that Sonia offers us moments of reflection through the title, through her titles, is something that I find really fascinating about her practice. This piece specifically being titled Writer Type Pen and Sword, um, there's this linguistic play on pen and sword yeah. and the way that the Remington Company was his, historically they were founded as a company that provided arms for the Civil War and because of that mechanism they were able to easily transfer that to creating typewriters mm -hmm. and so that metaphor about the pen and sword and seeing that in the work and the way that Sonia weaves all of that together as a moment for not only for us to reflect on American history, mm -hmm. but also the presence of black identity. That's in right. American history. Yeah, and um, she places black identity front and center because she's chosen to place puffs of her own hair on top of these keypads, literally obliterating the Roman alphabet that is underneath so that all we see here are puffs of the artist's hair. And in doing so, she's really making a comment. Um, and, and as I mentioned, you know, this is, I think, a really pivotal work because it is out of writer type that she begins thinking about what would eventually become the twist font, um, which is something that's super important to her. Right behind it is um, 1877 R Curl, and this is a series of seven poems by black femme poets, but the first print that we see here is actually the twist font, and it's super exciting because you get to see the transliterated font um, next to each of the Roman letters, and then of course the hairball in the corner, which is every single letter stacked on top of one another to create a kind of hairball. Mm -hmm. And it's really brilliant to see it, to see the twist spot next to the Roman alphabet, because it's a way to see the manifestation of how Sonia's work is really attempting to push back on the cultural dominance of the yeah. Roman alphabet and to really center the rich linguistic history of African cultures. And of the seven poems, the one that I want to point out is found sonnet, The Wig by Rita Dove. It was the poet laureate Rita Dove who gave Sonia the title twist for her font. Mm -hmm. Which looking at this work, but in conversation with all of the poets that we have installed on the wall and that Sonia worked with for this project, it reminds me of another reason that I love her work is because collaboration is such a key tenet of her practice. And it also allows for multi-sensory experiences for oh our visitors, because not only was there the collaboration of Sonia and Rita Dove, mm -hmm. Sonia and Bo Pang, the graphic designer mm -hmm. that helped her um, create the letters through the curl pattern of her hair, but then it's also an activation by our visitors yeah. in the space who can call the 1877 hour curl number and be able to hear these poets recite these words. Yeah. Monica, we've just been talking about Twist, and now that we're back here at the start of the exhibition, can you tell us how Twist is showing up in some of the design elements? Yeah, so at the title wall, we have the title of the exhibition, Sonia Clark, We Are Each Other. Um, but as you know, we decided to transliterate Sonia's name 
um, into the twist font. And so that's what you see here are the curls, the curl pattern of twist um, and using Sonia Clark's name. And I really thought that that was a strong way to start the exhibition um, for two reasons. One, to kind of introduce twist um, as a really important project that will come up again in the exhibition. And so it's a way of um, kind of offering the visitor a little, little breadcrumb as they walk through. But then also, because you don't fully understand what it is here, it's a bit of a mystery. Um, and I really like that element. Um, and that kind of mystery is then also tied to the fact that we've titled this exhibition We Are Each Other, um, which comes from the last um, lines of a Gwendolyn Brooks poem um, about Paul Robeson. And we have also transliterated that, that poem um, into the twist font and, and, and visitors can find that uh, right behind you actually. One of the really impactful parts about starting the exhibition with this poem by Gwendolyn Brooks is that it really foregrounds a lot of the elements that you'll see throughout Sonia Clark's practice. One of those being collaboration and this bond between two artists, but also the power of language. Totally. In this work, Sonia is pointing to a writer who is then pointing to... A social activist. A social activist, yeah. you know, someone who was intentional about using their voice to fight social injustices. So Hannah, we're standing in the room devoted to the Beaded Prayers Project, and this is Sonia's longest running community-driven participatory project. Um, and as you know, this was kind of one of, the, one of the foundational projects that we looked at as co-curators of the exhibition. You know, we really wanted to bring the various projects that Sonia has done over the course of her long career in kind of workshop format with you know, regular people. Mm -hmm. um, and Beaded Prayers is, is one of those projects. And right behind you are empty panels um, because of course the project is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited because we've been able to, with the help of the education department, um, run some workshops here so that Atlantans can be part of the Beaded Prayers project. Absolutely, and that's really one of the many incredible parts of this project is that it is both communal and global. Yeah. Because this is a project that's been going on for over 25 years now, there are prayers, hopes, and wishes from people across the globe through really mundane fiber materials. Yeah, I mean, this project really illustrates probably more than any others um, of Sonia's, the power of the individual. Mm -hmm. And she really wanted to empower that person who came to a workshop to be able to make that packet, to present their prayer, to be part of a larger collective kind of social good. Um, and that's really, I, for me, that's the power of this project is understanding that you too can be part of something much larger than yourself. So Hannah, we're standing in front of Gele Kente flag, and I thought it was really important to include Sonia's MFA project from Cranbrook as part of the exhibition, um, not only because it participates in the larger, um, the, the, the larger kind of project of the exhibition, We Are Each Other, um, but also because I think it gives really rich context to her practice in terms of you know, being one of the earliest flags that she, um, that she works on. I'm wondering what this work means for you. This work is such an impactful piece because I think the impact of it is felt on different levels. Mm -hmm. Visually, I think is it, it is a beautiful synthesis of the American flag and Ghanaian kente symbols. And so it becomes this visual realization of African-American identity by taking symbols from both cultures and weaving them together. However, because it functions as a traditional Nigerian gele that is really adorned and wrapped around a woman's head, it, um, it operates in a way that becomes a part of the material culture of African American identity. The second part of this project that goes beyond Sonia weaving it was also Sonia asking women 
from the Detroit area to wrap the gele and to tie the gele around their heads. And Sonia mentions how she believes that every woman that tied the gele imparted some of their wisdom and their knowledge and their intellect in the silk and cotton threads. And so I think it's a really beautiful way of just encapsulating notions of African diasporic cultural identity in a traditionally American symbol. And one of the final points that I like to make about this work is that during the interview that I conducted with Sonia Clark for the in-gallery film that's playing in the exhibition, one comment that she shared was that during um, her time as a graduate student at Cranbrook Art Academy, she interviewed the late painter Sam Gilliam, and he was the one who shared this idea that others look to monuments, we look to cloths. And this piece is so powerful because it really conveys the impetus of that idea and the way that Sonia is looking to not only the cultural history of Ghanaian kente cloth and Nigerian gele cloth, but also the history of the American flag and the power of weaving all of those together and creating a new cloth from it. So we're standing in the gallery devoted to the Haircraft Project, and I love this project because it demonstrates a super radical concept that Sonia had, right? And that is that hairdressers are also artists. And in order to kind of prove this point that she wanted to make, um, she set about making this project. And this happened when she was living in Richmond, Virginia. And what she ended up doing is that she went to a different hairstylist every month. And you see in each of these photographs, Sonia is on the right. Her head is literally the canvas that these hairstylists worked on. And to the left of Sonia is the hairstylist that worked on her that month. And by showing us these 11 um, photographs and across from it is yet another kind of piece of evidence that she is offering to us because in addition to working on Sonia's head, she also asked that hairstylist to create a work on canvas um, that kind of is a visual manifestation of the work that they created on her head. And so this is a really kind of, for me, it's like a one-two punch. I mean, it is really showing us that hairdressers are also artists too. And this is a super, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's not a new idea. Um, it's an idea that's rooted in history, um, but she has kind of brought it to our contemporary moment. Mm -hmm. And she brings it to our contemporary moment in a masterful way, yeah. because not only does she center the work of these hairdressers, but she finds a way to really in illustrate the connective tissue between hairdressing and embroidery. Yeah. And much like embroidery, hair can be woven, wrapped, knotted, twisted. There's so many similarities between the way that black hair can be manipulated and the way that one manipulates a fiber and textiles that I think it's really beautiful to see this one-to-one -one relationship between the work of each hairstylist on Sonia's head as the canvas and their artistry when it is when it transitions to the fine art of embroidery yeah. and also thinking about the implications of allowing hairstylists to see themselves as fine artists. So Hannah, we're standing in front of the loom and I'm so excited because visitors to Sonia Clark We Are Each Other have the opportunity every Saturday afternoon from one to four to participate in reconstruction exercise uh, because we have a weaver on site that is here to help guide visitors through the experience of weaving. Um, part of that is because not everyone has a great familiarity with the um, hand weaving um, and a loom like this can be kind of complicated. Um, but the other part of that really has to do with um, the desire to kind of create a communal atmosphere for reconstruction exercise. Mm -hmm. 
And as visitors sit at the loom with the guidance of a weaver, they have access to seeing their contributions mm -hmm. through the ongoing participatory element of recreating mm -hmm. the Confederate flag of truce. Yeah. And one um, result of that is through the scrolls that you see hanging on our walls. Now these scrolls are the contribution of visitors from every venue that the exhibition has been installed in mm -hmm. who have sat with a weaver and have been um, allowed to really recreate the Confederate flag of truce. Yeah, I think it's really impactful for people to be able to sit at the loom to understand what they're doing because as Sonia has pointed out it's really only through making that you begin to know something. Mm -hmm. And similar to reconstruction exercise, the lesson plan activation mm. is another way of creating moments for people to embody the knowledge of what it means to weave the flag mm -hmm. or what it means to use your hand in a rubbing motion to go over the etching yeah. of the Confederate flag of truce. And it's a way to counter how prevalent the Confederate battle flag is. Yeah. And the fact that the Confederate battle flag is a symbol that is etched into American consciousness. And by providing visitors with opportunities to get to know the flag that actually ended the Civil War, yeah. it is this radical opportunity for social activism mm -hmm. in our gallery spaces. Absolutely. Sonia Clark, We Are Each Other is the first exhibition that brings together Sonia Clark's large-scale participatory projects from throughout her career in one place. And that's one of the reasons why this exhibition is so important. This exhibition allows for our visitors to contribute to Sonia's ongoing participatory projects in addition to fostering moments for connectivity and reflection as they engage with critical issues. In its title, We Are Each Other, that is both a declaration and a call to action.